Hey guys, it's Mrs. Tuckwood here. I've been thinking about Easter and a couple things come to mind. In the Tuckwood house, we don't give gifts for Easter, but the kids definitely go on an Easter egg hunt. And other than that, it's, it's more about having a big family meal together. That part is super fun. Who doesn't like starting their day off with some chocolate? Um, as for what Easter really means to me, it's taken me quite a few years to really realize the magnitude of what it is. Jesus died for me and you. This is where my entire faith rests. From this one amazing selfless act, he took away all of my sins. He died so I can have complete health. He's never mad at me. He doesn't punish me and I don't have to fear. He is in complete control and I don't have to do a thing to earn his grace. I don't always feel all the promises that he's already given to me, but the more established I am in what he's done for me, the quicker I can get back to knowing who I am in him. Check this out. Romans 10 verse 9. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's pretty cool. Thanks, Mrs. Tuckwood. Well, good day, SCA family. Uh, uh, devotional this morning, similar thoughts as to the link that's being sent to your family for this weekend. So here goes, you're getting it first. In March 2015, Lynn Grosbeck, well, she lost control of her car and landed in the icy Spanish Fork River in Utah. 14 hours later, first responders found her 18-month-old daughter, Lily, in her car seat, hanging upside down just above the frigid river water. Prior to finding Lily, both police officers and firefighters report they heard an adult voice yell, help me, from inside the car. They discovered that the voice could not have come from the young mother, who likely died from the impact. The rescuers still can't explain the voice or how the girl survived hanging upside down for 14 hours in freezing temperatures without being dressed for the cold. Was this a miracle? What do you think? Maybe, maybe not. Well, we don't know. We don't know. But I do know Easter's coming. It's in a few days and it hinges on the miracle for sure. The miracle of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You've heard that before. Well, that's what we celebrate. That's what Easter is. The resurrection of Jesus is the one pivotal miracle that our faith ultimately hinges on. Dr. Paul Meyer, past professor of ancient history at Western Michigan University, he concluded this. He said, if all the evidence is weighed carefully and fairly, it is indeed justifiable, according to the canons of historical research, to conclude that the sepulcher of Joseph of Arimathea, in which Jesus was buried, was actually empty on the morning of the first Easter. And no shred of evidence has yet been discovered in literary sources, in epigraphy, or in archaeology that would disprove the statement. So here's the miracle according to Matthew 28, right from Scripture. Verse 28. After, sorry, chapter 28, uh, verse 1. After the Sabbath, at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will find him. Now I have told you. The miracle of a resurrection, of the resurrection, there it is. You know, but many Christians, they have been uh, giving up on believing in miracles. For them, the age of miracles belongs to back in the day, to the early church, for when awe-inspiring events, events like Moses parting the Red Sea and, of course, the virgin birth, well, they all confirm the authenticity and the divine nature of Jesus. But just because we don't see phenomena of biblical proportions occurring today, I'd like to suggest uh, that doesn't mean that God has left the business of miracles. From second chances at life, I've seen many, to scientifically unexplained mysteries, there's lots, even to hope when all seems hopeless to joy when all seems depressing, to strength when all seems overwhelming, to courage when all seems fearful. 
The good news of the resurrection is because of what Jesus has done by offering his life so we can have life. We have reason to not be afraid, overwhelmed, weak, or depressed. God's with us and he loves us. We're never alone. That's cool. Jesus, he took our past, present, and future sins upon himself so that we could have new life. Because all our wrongdoing is forgiven, we are reconciled to God. That means our relationship is restored. There's nothing between us. Jesus' resurrection has become the source of new life for those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. As Mrs. Tuckwood read to you, the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You know, SCA, if um, your heart is prompted about anything today, make sure you talk to somebody, me or Mrs. Tuckwood or many others in our school, students included. Uh, they'd love to talk to you. Just don't leave that to yourself. Remember, God is at work in these modern times. And because of that, we must never give up hope and always have faith. God bless you and happy Easter. And he is risen. Thanks, Pastor Dirty. We're going to leave you guys with the worship song. I just want to invite you to take a moment. You can listen, rest, or reflect, whatever works for you. Maybe this could be an Easter moment for you.